All right, so welcome to the July 4th meeting of the Heartwork and Philosophy Guild. I guess actually I should hand over to Rulan, who is the caretaker here. So I've got the recording going. Care. It's over to you. Co-caretaker. Right. But uh, yeah, I can uh, I can uh, go ahead and really work at not pausing, hesitating, and stuttering because I want to use this as an opportunity to develop a smoother presentation and speaking style. Ergo, today is July 4th. Welcome to the Artwork and Philosophy Guild meeting, Ben and April, and also welcome to anyone who um, might be listening to this after the fact, and know that as a uh, listener, we are interested and open to comments, ideas, and uh, any willingness to participate. So you just need to communicate with us uh, about that. Um, and with that, may I uh, um, ask for um, our official note taker to lift his hand. That would be Ben. Thank you for volunteering, Ben. Much appreciated. Um, ben, I will also ask you to do that. You read my mind. Thank you. Um, and um, do I have a volunteer to uh, do the land acknowledgement? April, thank you. Take it away. Thank you. So I wish to acknowledge, first of all, that I come to you from the unceded ancestral territories of the Seychelles Nation and point out that we acknowledge the land because the land gives us everything that we have, basically, and that we as humans walk here on this land amongst many different relations who come in all different forms. And without the land, we wouldn't be here. Everything begins with the land and we return to the land in the end. Um, to acknowledge that uh, ourselves and the land has been stewarded over tens of thousands of years in fact, time immemorial by indigenous peoples. As Ben often says, at, at great cost to themselves. And we acknowledge their generosity in sharing this land with us and in having uh, stewarded it in, in such a way that we are able to be here on it at this point. I'd like to end the acknowledgement by just grounding us for a moment, almost literally inviting you to become aware of the ground that you're on. Feel yourself being supported in the wherever it is that you're sitting. Put your feet flat on the ground and feel your connection to the earth and the ground, through your feet and through your body. And as you do that, take a deep breath in and hold it and release it. And again, A deep breath in and release it. And as you release it, release tension, thoughts, or anything that holds you back from being here with us. 
in this present time, in this circle. And I invite you to take one last breath in. Hold it. And release it. And when you're ready, open your eyes and find yourself here with us. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, so along with that grounding, uh, I am proposing that our check-in question be, what do you hope to get from our meeting today? And uh, the circle as I see it is um, Ben, April, and then myself. <clears throat> um, I want to talk Connect the Dots Club. Over to you, April. Sorry, I didn't I didn't hear what you said, Ben. Connect the dots club. Oh, right. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd like to talk about that too. And any other updates that we have and also the connection with with the six conversations. Hmm. Over to Erlan. I um am hoping to get a sense of uh how close we are to um, ad, uh, starting to promote the Connect the Dots Club um, and uh, and uh, the ways in which to do it. Which this might be depending on where we are in terms of promoting it, uh, in terms of of deciding on the format, um, uh, the promotion, the timing, and those types of questions. Um, all right. Uh, and do, do we have anything from the pat from earlier? And we can leave the establishing the badges um, uh, on the agenda. And if we get to it, great. It doesn't feel like it's an urgent. It, it's a it's a nice if topic, but doesn't feel like it's an urgent one. So I propose that we can just leave it. So we'll do one more round to see, uh, are we agreed on the agenda? And is there anything that anyone would like to add at this point? So back to you, Ben. No, I feel like I feel like that's a, <clears throat> it's a good agenda and I've got nothing to add. And I agree about the, the badges are nice if, over to you, April. I, I agree with what Ben said, over to you, Roland. Awesome. Um, let's quickly go over agreements. Um, I, I, um, I haven't, I usually do agreements um, here on the farm uh, once a day and we've been busy and this will be the third day in which I don't get them. Second day. No, we did figured out how to do it yesterday. Um, so uh, and I am going to just read what's on the screen, and then that will let me know that that will be the time that people need to actually read them, <laughs> if you see what, I'm, what I mean. So we're all in this together, um, and that when we're making suggestions and we're giving ideas that we're talking about us as a whole and uh, not passing the buck, as in you should do that, um, that um, we always have choice. And choices have consequences, and the consequences are are multiple. There's all sorts of different types of consequences, good or bad. Um, we lead with curiosity, kindness, patience, compassion, and gentleness. And um, that is to others, and maybe more importantly, to ourselves. Um, we listen for understanding, and it occurs to me that listening to understanding is also listening to what's coming out of our own mouths. I don't always know what it is that is coming out. Um, speak from the heart and what's true for you, and that's what's true for you right now. Um, uh, that uh, things are um, things are not singular. 
um, that's not a binary world, that we are in an also and world um, that, um, yeah, leave that like that, um, to uh, have fun and to find the humor and to keep things simple. Uh, and that is just a practical approach. Uh, there's uh, energy gets built instead of expended when you keep things light. Um, the um, a reminder that the session is recorded and it'll be posted to YouTube. So if anyone who is participating in the meeting has anything that they would like to have uh, stricken, I just said like as if I was British, I don't know why, um, then you can let us know and we'll remove it. Um, and in terms of agreements, are um, are the current participants good with the agreements? Is there anything that you want to bring up or anything that you'd like to add? Bennett. I am good. <clears throat> and the only thing that came to me is when we were have fun, find the humor, keep it simple and light. Um, I was thinking and light in, you know, multiple senses of that word. Um, over to you, April. Yes, I I um, agree with all of these, and I was thinking probably along the same lines as Ben about keeping it light, in particular when we're engaging with other people. <clears throat> I think this is really a time to be paying attention to trauma informed. Mm -hmm. conversations and communication and that keeping it light and invitational is uh, can make a big difference whether people are able to engage with us or not in a way so that's all I had to add on to Roland okay, okay. so the the uh uh, primary function of the guild is to act as the emotional heart of the Lifeboat Academy, mm -hmm. create opportunities for people to develop deeper relationships with themselves uh, and with each other and with all of our relations on the farms. So all, creature, all creatures, uh, great and small. Um, and that the main responsibilities of the guild, so this is all just to help us keep in mind when we're talking about things around this guild is that we're building and deepening internal relationships. We're working towards uh, conviviality and creating opportunities for celebration. Um, we are engaging in what we're calling experimental spirituality. So, uh, which includes a reconnection with land, uh, which means all our relations um, and um, loosely termed re-indigenization um, that uh, we're engaging in personal healing and grief work. Um, and I think that's actually part of building and deepening internal relationships. Um, uh, we're also sort of feeling what's going on in the Lifeboat Academy where the vibes watchers um, and uh, uh, trying to keep the agreements um, at the heart of what happens in the Lifeboat Academy. Uh, we're keepers of the circle process and the agreements. And um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. Agenda continues under subtasks, sub may not <laughs> go under main responsibilities. Uh, any, any comments or additions or clarifications over to Ben? I think it is interesting revisiting. I was thinking about Connect the Dots Club and um, how that fits with these responsibilities. And uh, and I feel like Connect the Dots Club is maybe moving in a slightly different direction. And so it's an interesting open question, I think, about um, are there things to add to Connect the Dots Club that bring these responsibilities in more? Or is it actually that Connect the Dots Club maybe lives in one of the other guilds? Um, just in, I think there's nothing wrong with us developing it, um, but it, it is interesting to kind of pull the two together. Over to you, April. 
Well, I've been considering the conviviality and celebration aspect of this guild and wondering, is it possible to have virtual potlucks for one thing, but also thinking particularly at this time as, as a dinner side of the coin, perhaps to, to um, a time of raised anxiety and social pressures and tensions is uh, how do we celebrate what we've gained mm. so far and put that out there as a, um, maybe a little lantern in the dark or a, uh, um, a a basket of fire that helps us find our way. And if there's a way to include that slightly differently, um, mm -hmm. also is, yes, just in thinking also about the other guild responsibilities and engaging people and making people feel connected to this on to uh, Roland um yeah I uh, I feel like I'm responding to whether or not the connect the dots club um, fits here or elsewhere I still feel like it fits here because it's the heart work and philosophy guild um, and um, I think one of the reasons why we were inspired to start talking about having something like this is as an opportunity for the hard work and philosophy uh, guild to be able to keep forward uh, in people's minds the purpose of the Lifeboat Academy and also to help build the purpose of the Lifeboat Academy. So I, I feel like it's still in the right place. And and, and, and I, I remember we also talked about the Connect the Dots Club before it was the Connect the Dots Club and it was just this vague book club um, also being useful to other guilds, you know, for more direct, you know, hard science kind of um, stuff with the, the Farm Guild um, and et cetera. Um, so that where the format can be useful. So I, I feel like it's still in the right place. And it's, I think it's a, it's a, it's always a, I always find it useful to ask that question. Is this the right place for something? Because it allows for um, reflection about, well, why is it here? What have we talked about? Has any of that changed? The whole AMAC reflect kind of uh, evaluation. So uh, uh, shall we do another round with that or, or yeah? Okay, um, over to you, Ben. Yeah, I, I, like, I like the points that you're making. And, and it also makes me think of um, the part of the, you know, what does it mean when we talk about internal connections and internal relationships? And one way of thinking about that is personal relationships. But another way of thinking about that is what are the relationships between the guilds? And that's part of the Connect the Dots Club, actually, is how do the guilds relate to each other? And it makes me think also about Venn diagrams. And, you know, there's rather than artificially separating this guild is unique and only this and this guild is unique and only that. And there's a, ga a chasm in between them. There's always going to be this is, you know, this is sort of touching into that and um and i think that's connecting the dots so you know like what are the relationships between the farm and the finances and the relationships and the etc so okay. yeah i really like that point um over to you april i'd be really interested in seeing heart work connected in the big major diagram that we looked at, I think it was last week, that includes all the kind of moving parts of mm -hmm. everything. <laughs> um, and I think the Heartwork Guild was in there. I just can't remember where it was, but um, I would like to, to see that for my own understanding, but also because it would point at other things that are kind of seminal to this, I believe. 
And I also, I mean, it feels like we're we're just really discovering quite a lot about this in the last month, maybe. Um, which is unexpected and good, I believe. On to Roland. I, that all sounds good. Um, very good. And uh, I have nothing to add. So um, are we ready to move on or shall we do one more round with this? I'm good. April, how about you? I'm good. Let's move on. Okie doke. Um, so um, uh, in terms of action items from the last meeting, um, Ronnie was kind enough to write a blurb. So done. <laughs> um, Unicorn. Wow. Unicorn. <laughs> All right. So um, I think that that uh, opens up um, the floor to start talking about um, the Connect the Dots Club. Um, we've so this is the uh, agenda that we we decided on earlier, and uh, the first item is the Connect the Dots Club, and. Um, how um, would one of you be willing to do sort of a quick go over of what we've covered so far and where we're at? I would be happy to, and thank you. Um, I and I will do a super short version. <clears throat> um, I think it's uh, you know April was talking about how a lot of things are getting clearer in the last month or so, and. And I actually feel like this continues to happen. Like we get, we, we, this is for me, the value of AMAC reflect is that when we try to turn something, anything, any concept into what's that actually look like in terms of connect the dots club or book club, you know, like, like Roland was saying, um, all of these interesting things come out. So, um, we've been framing the, what was originally the book club as um and now the connect the dots club the goals are really about um how do we kind of build a reference list um and build an understanding of and i've been starting to frame it in my head of you know if we're talking about the lifeboat academy is here to serve lifeboat builders what do lifeboat builders need to know and of course it's a multifaceted thing um, including everything from how to do community organizing, how to deal with conflict, how to plant crops, um, and everything in between. So what we're really trying to do is map out the relevant fields of knowledge that lifeboat builders might need to know. And um, we've positioned it so that six conversations is... Uh, a way of potential lifeboat builders identifying and, and deepening their commitment to building a lifeboat. And then the Connect the Dots Club becomes a way of exploring what that means to be a lifeboat builder. What are the realms of knowledge that are um, available? And um, so um, in the end, it kind of looks like a, like a syllabus or a reading list. Um, but it's more than that because it's sort of a map of the territory. And um, we've framed the work in phases, into three phases. The first phase is currently underway, which is about uh, building the foundation, doing the prep work, and um, starting to get people interested in it. Phase two is bringing together the first meeting of folks to develop this reading list or the syllabus or whatever we wanna, how we wanna think about it. And then that is actually, and that second phase is on the road to introducing what we've been, we've been talking about graduate and faculty level and undergraduate level. And so phase one is really about sort of the faculty getting together and outline what this course is and phase, uh, that's phase two. And then phase three is about bringing the undergrads in 
and testing it out. And where we are in terms of phase one is um, we want to be doing some, we want to engage people in some of the brainstorming kind of, I think, more to get other people thinking about this. I think this is stuff that, you know, in sort of the core team is aware of a lot of this stuff already. We we talk about this pretty regularly, but involving other people in the brainstorming is really a way of getting other people to be thinking about all of these different components. Um, so figuring out how to get people to uh, think about what their favorite reference points are and um, and then do some preliminary work in terms of organizing it, getting it ready for that further discussion. And um, so we spent a lot of time thinking about how to engage people in that. And I have, and, and we are about to segue into the planning for phase two. What does that actually look like? And I have uh, an informal incomplete proposal, um, more kind of a um, a provocation um, that I would like to offer up that I think actually answers both the brainstorming and the phase two part. And um, and so uh, that's where I think we are. And I guess uh, once around for a, other additions, um, additions or questions. So um, should I pass it back to you, Rolana, or over to April? Over to April. Okay, over to you, April. Um, I think I have some questions, but I don't know what they are yet. So pass and over to Roland. I think that was a, a, a good overview. And um, uh, I think the questions can maybe come out as then and, and may also be answered as we start actually discussing what 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 comes next. So um, okay, so in terms of overview, that was great. And um, and so where do we go from here? I want to provoke you. Can I provoke you, please? Um, privately or, or right or right publicly right here? Right, right here. Now? Yes. Okay. I'm, I want to be I want to be provocative. I am, um, I'm curious and looking forward to it. So um here is my uh, my thought that does two things at once um is mirror board. Miro is your friend. Miro boards do everything. This ad brought to you by Miro Doc Inc. Um, <laughs> uh, so what I was think I was thinking one of my homework assignments was to explore some of the other because uh, we've been talking about polls on Facebook yeah. or using other sol polling software and then linking it to Facebook or using something like Lumio, which has more sophisticated options. And um, the more I looked into most of the other technologies, they all suck. <laughs> like, you know, they they all have these really dramatic limitations and um, they're, they just didn't feel friendly and they also don't let you build on things. And I was working on the diagram for the um, Finance and Legal Guild and just realizing how wonderful the the you know having that physicality of a whiteboard of an electronic whiteboard is and um and i think this lends itself really well to what we're talking about so what i was thinking is that we could invite people um to brainstorm you know basically populate the mirror board with post-its for what are your favorite reference materials and I, I just color coded them, books, articles, videos, and website. There could be other things, um, but we can easily invite people to the board and have them, um, you know, generate new ideas, new items, and then um, 
actually, I think even as we're doing that brainstorming, because it's physical, we could give people the instruction not only to add new items, but to do some clustering. So, you know, if you have items that are similar, put them with each other, if you're adding a new item. And, um, and I just started, because we've already have a brainstormed list of like 30 some reference materials. And I started to put them on, at, um, out here as post notes. So, um, you know, we can, like there's the commons, there's donut economics, uh, sociocracy, retro suburbia. Um, there's some trauma stuff, um, two eyed seeing, you know, like it's basic. And there's, there's some creative stuff here. Actually, when active hope and community, you know, basically, and I'm, I'm not really thinking this through too carefully right now, but, um, You know, the, basically there are, um, um, it would be, you know, we, we could do a little bit of clustering. So to, so I, I, I was only partially done with what I was trying to prepare before the meeting. So I was trying to cheat there and get it a little bit more refined. But, but basically, we can do a kind of a rough start, invite people then to add more things, move post-it notes around to start to kind of do a little pre-clustering, and then actually use the Miro board as the main reference for the Connect the Dots Club. So uh, it seems like um, step one is really populating it with post-it notes. Step two is something like clustering. Um, and I thought we could do a little cluster, but with that Venn diagram thing. So, um, you know, it'd be really easy to, um, you know, like sort of there are some things that are kind of on the line. Um, you know, sort of that are kind of both, both in, you know, more than one category. So uh, we can do that kind of Venn, Venn diagram clustering. Um, we can also do, you know, say for example, um, we have the different clusters. We can also have conversations about the actual connections. Like what are, what are the relationships between the different clusters? Does one lead to the other? Are they, you know, how how do they connect? Um, and in Miro, you can also do dot voting. So um, once we once we kind of organize the material, then we can have everyone dot vote on what are the sort of the key ones in you know in each of the clusters. What are what are the key materials in each of those clusters? Um, and I think the last thing is that we can use um, comments and um, uh, uh, whatever, you know, like basically, because uh, we, we talked about not just why, not just what is the reference, but why do you think it's important? So we can have people just put comments on the materials about the whys, you know, the why is this something that you would recommend? Um, so it just seems to me like it's really easy to layer the different things that we've talked about on here in a physical way. And um, yeah, so that's my provocation. So uh, questions, comments, et cetera, over to you, April. Well, I find myself to be provoked. That's probably <laughs> a, a good thing. Um, and it it occurs to me that what we're doing here is through a series of resources that we are actually mapping the philosophy part of the Heartwork and Philosophy Guild. And so we are making layered and connective 
diagrams that pull together the concepts, the the uh, the breadth of what we're talking about, and um, being able to show their relationships. And in doing that, anybody that has a favorite book can be included in all of this and feel like they're part of the whole. Because you realize that there's a number of people that hold that in common, but also lots of other people that might not. But you're connected then in another way, well, either by a relationship or a cluster into, into the whole. So this is a holistic representation of my, this is like CD 3d in a way mm. this is like cultural theory um and oh now my brain's going nuts thinking about all the different levels and and connections but it does it does lay out potential curriculums then but it also lays out the human connections to this stuff in that people can start somewhere here and then move move on to somewhere else and know who else is doing that as well. Oh, okay, over to Roland. Uh, yes, I'm very curious about um, so one of the things is, and I think it's something that we talked about, I, I I like that we're using Miro because it's a technology that we've already introduced. And to keep it simple and not ask people to use too many different types of technologies. So it, I think that that is a, a good habit because it becomes encouraging for participation. Uh, so I like that. Um, I am curious to know how, what a public curating of, um, of this collection of resources works out. Um, yeah, there is a there is um a really interesting um the there's a lot of relationality around doing it like this uh because you're not just deciding where you think should things should go but it's also you're doing it in relationship with other people and using this um type of medium it's also not people that you have in your face where you can you can have a discussion about well i think i think the Watiko book should go with this grouping instead of that grouping can you explain to me why why you have a divergent opinion so i'm curious to see how that works itself out i'm also wondering about you know creating the venn diagrams who is going to do that? And one of the things that could that I'm curious to see is does it sort of shake out where people the people who are naturally attracted to doing that kind of work um then sort of um they get outed, <laughs> you know, because they're 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 they will be participating and um and will find out who they are. You know who are the natural um, uh, or the instinctual arch archivists, and who are the the uh, instinctual sociologists, and uh, that could be very interesting. Um, and uh, I also can't quite imagine how that's going to work. So, with the agreement of also and. That is um, my response to the provocation. Um, so since you're the provocateur, Ben, I am returning um, the uh, the speaking um, spirit to you. I, I, I feel provoked. Um, actually, I don't. Um, I think 
Well, and this is where I, I, I feel like this is talking through phase two. I think we've started to talk through yeah. phase two. Yeah. And what I'm hearing is that we're all signs point towards go for Miro board as the way of doing it. And um and you can use Miro in real time. So you can use it. Uh, one of the advantages is that you can use it asynchronously. So everyone gets a link and gets to go look at the board whenever they get a chance to go look at the board. And you can use it in real time. And so what I think could be a staging is, um, and haven't, I haven't thought this through in any great detail. So I'm just going to, I'm talking out loud and we'll see what comes out. Um, I think that well, we already have phases, phase one, phase. So the phase one part of it is um, we continue to, we, we transfer the items that we've already identified onto the board internally, this group probably, or maybe the guilds, you know, or the people on the guild list um, do a cluster and asynchronous clustering. And we invite people to add post-its and put their new post-its near other things that look similar. And what I can tell from experience um, pretty consistently, there will be people who will just add post-its off to the side. Like they have their idea and they don't really want to put it anywhere. And there will be other people who will do a little tidying and move some of the post-its around, you know, and, um, so I would suggest that we do that without any of the Venn diagram part, you know, no circles and no arrows or anything like that, just post-its. Yeah. And then the first meeting, um, I think the question would really be the first, again, I don't want to get into too many details. One of the first questions would be, there's going to be a visual pattern already, you know, from the, from how it started. So um, I think the first question would be, what, what clusters are you seeing? And when people talk about the clusters, the, you know, there's like, I see, there seems to be a lump over here of these. Um, and usually the facilitation question is, what's a handle we could give that cluster? Like, what's a rough name that we could call that? And, and I think once we have those clusters, then we can start to move them around. You know, how how do these clusters relate? Or should should this cluster be closer to this cluster? Or, you know, where that gets so sort of step three, I guess, is the Venn diagramming part. But that could be done as a conversation in real time. Yeah. And then um another step, once we have those clusters and kind of organized within the clusters, the voting. So within each of the clusters, what are the re key reference materials, dot voting kind of thing. And again, it could be a, a conversation around, like give everyone, even between meetings, it could be, you know, everyone gets 10 votes, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the, the rules are, put your votes before the next meeting. And then when we come back to the meeting, what are we seeing? Where are the cluster? Like where? What are the big vote getters, and why? Have a conversation about that, and then we can then beyond that we could have that. And you know, what are the connections? What are the, what are the arrows and relationships between the clusters? Uh, so that's, I guess, um, to answer your question, Milan, about like how would that public curation part work, is there would be some asynchronous work, but then it would always come back together for a real-time discussion for exactly like, oh, I noticed you moved my post-it. Why did you move my post-it? Um, and, um, and, but those conversations actually are really, really interesting, I think, usually. So um, yeah, over to April for elaborations. Um, April's mind is blown with this and I also want to leap in to me this is a sandbox and to me this is play and I think that that's really important the more that we can make this sort of playful 
um, the more engagement we're going to get and the more that it'll be an enjoyable process and we're sort of inoculating people into fun without them even knowing it. But the other thing that occurred to me is if you were to take even the initial, what you showed us, Ben, uh, on, on Miro that had some post-it, some clumping, some Venn diagramming and a few relational things um, and publish that on the website, mm -hmm. anybody that had anything to do with the website then could be invited in. It's a tool for engagement as well. And you could just say, want to know how your ideas connect to our ideas? Have a look at this. Or want to change the world in a, in a free and simple way? Take 10 minutes and have a look here. You can, you can change our hearts and minds by, by doing that. Or want to know what a whole bunch of other bright people have figured out are good resources? We've got a picture of that, some way of of just putting that out there. Um, I know if I was seeking something out and looking at people's websites to see, is this a group I want to have anything to do with, that mm -hmm. this sort of thing would attract me to have a deeper look without feeling that I was trapped somehow and going to be, you know, hit up for money or, or a cult-like experience. Um, this is philosophy and this is we're making it invitational to show your slice of philosophy as it relates to this really really important set of issues well i could be giving a speech i could do the elevator speech for this very soon on to roland um so i just wanted to ask is um Whitworks to Struthers is that is that um, your evil twin or is that your middle name? I think it's me, and I've no idea why that's up there. Oh. It may okay. have dated from a time I had more than one Zoom account, which was terribly confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I could change it to "April Saves the World, Join Me," or whatever might be useful <laughs> um well so i've got two things uh two uh, uh provocative questions to the provocation um one of them is um uh i was thinking does it take a certain level of confidence to feel like we can someone can be playful in uh in a in in the sandbox um, and in terms, what does that, what does that, what does that, do, what does that invitation to play in the, in the sandbox look like to create that sense of security or, or confidence in, in joining in the play? Um, and the other one was, we've talked about it before, and I don't think anything it was just part of the conversation and I don't think there was any decisions around it, but are there actually some seminal works that we want to start with or that we would, we would like to start with um, uh, for the connect the dots club. Um, and that, you know, I guess part of the, the, the provocative question is um, uh, would starting with the, with a seminal work um before doing the clustering allow for people to develop the confidence to voice their opinions in the sandbox so uh over to uh ben oh and i want to say i've got i th this isn't an objection um it is really just questions that i have um so over to you ben I don't know why you would give a caveat about an objection because it didn't seem like there was any. Um, because cool. I I I don't know if you noticed the notes as we we're, um, because I think if I'm interpreting what you were saying properly, and I may not be, but if you were asking, what do 
potential participants, you know, the people we want to engage, what do they need to feel confident? Then um, one of the wonderful things about Miro is, um, and first of all, we would be inviting, remember this is for grad students and faculty, right? right? So this is for people that are already have some awareness of what we're doing. We have some relationship with them. These are not strangers off the street. So, you know, the, the people we would be inviting to this board would already have some connection with us. And it's really easy in that invitation to include some light instructions. And Miro has um, both the talk track and the how to use Miro. You know, there's that three minute video thing. So it would be super simple to set up the board itself so that there's a link if you don't know how Miro works, here's the, you know, the three minute guide to using Miro where, you know, here's how to add a sticky note. Here's how to move things around. And we can do a talk track where we can, you know, invite, here's what we're doing. Um, here's what we've, where we've started and here's what you can do. So I think that it would be really easy to get, provide people with that level of confidence. Um, likewise, that's prep work for the meetings. The only thing that people, the the more insecure among us don't have to add any post-it notes ahead of time. They can just wait till the meeting and then they'll show up and it's and there's still time to add post-it notes. So, um, you know, for people who are confident to play in the sandbox on their own before we get started, they can put, you know, put tip a, tip a toe in the water. And for those who aren't, they can just wait until we all get together and we go over the board. So I, I think that's a really good question about thinking about how do we add the supports. And the seminal works, that's that's what I was saying is first step is we've already identified, I have my list of the seminal works. Mm -hmm. And we can, and I think we can all internally say, are there any seminal works that we might be missing? And so people would not come into a blank board. They would come into a board that would already have many of the key things um, listed there. And um, and I think that, you know, this is part of what the step that we would want to do internally to the guild. Um, originally, the works were mostly nonfiction. But then we often talk about fiction. And there, there were nonfiction that you could say, some were kind of theory and some were practice. Um, but there we often reference other, you know, other things like the farm. I was thinking about the BBC farm shows, which we're not putting up there as a how-to guide, but they're sort of inspirations. Or um uh, Octavia Butler, you know, we're not saying that's our recipe, but there's a lot of inspiration that comes from that. So making sure that we have inspirational materials, um, uh, philosophical materials, practical, you know, sort of like those, you know, a couple of those different types of materials to um, prime the pump. So um, yeah, I think that's, and I've added the note here in the possible sequencing that, that the current resource list that we have would be the seminal works and that would be our job in the guild to make sure that it's kind of prepped in a way that's invitational. You know, it shows some variety. It um, gets, it whets the appetite for people to want to play in the sandbox. So that I, I don't see the, I didn't see your comments as objections at all. I thought they were really good clarification. So over to you, April. Mm -hmm. I thought they were really good clarification too. Um, but also, I wanted found myself wanting to ask you: Under what circumstances would you play in the sandbox? Um, because those might be the elements of success for other people as well. Um, and further to publishing this as sort of a picture onto the website to engage people who are already informed and who are going to be part of the academy in a more serious way, this could also attract people who are not yet, who are somewhat informed, but not deeply informed, maybe, but are looking for something. And this could be a way of laying out the table kind of 
as if there's a bunch of different dishes here and you know you're being shown recipes as well and being said we all we all eat at this table where's your spot kind of thing so this could be even more uh publicly and openly invitational for the not necessarily to get more resources but to get people engaged um and having the idea that actually look at how much these guys read they're serious about what's going on and you don't and that's not saying that everybody's highly academic or uh theorists or just people that sit around and talk and are kind of doing bubble chatter all the time it's saying look here here's a menu of stuff if this is interesting for you look at what else there might be on this website that's that's interesting so it could be a way to to bulk up the the number of engaged folks in the world beyond the i don't know 300 that are already on list a or b or whatever i do believe that people are continually seeking but they almost don't have a language to use until they're into it a bit more that's my last word practically over to roland um i wanted to suggest something that i would be uh, into doing is uh, um adding links to the description or the dust jacket of the books on the mirror board mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that people can say like Great. there's the title but then they actually get to get the sort of the, the description um so i would i i could do that um uh and then um i think clustering the books is a really good idea uh and then it, it, it and then the next step from that would be figuring out the like if the clusters are sort of uh topic specific then thinking of that as i think you were saying april thinking of that as the curriculum for like a course uh, and then who decides the order in which those books are covered and the, that could be that could be um something that is if there are books that the i'm going to call us the inner circle of the, of the um the uh uh philosophy guild um that then we can maybe maybe that's where we can come in and uh, decide you know this is the first book people should read and then and or we could do a similar exercise um for people who are interested in that topic as part of the coursework is to actually go through the books and do a do a, a fractal version of the of the same exercise to figure out what should where where we should start um and um in terms i really like the idea of making it more uh, accessible um to for people where people feel like they might be able to sit at the table uh because there's a lot of people who are really smart and really curious and who do a lot of reading who don't feel like they're academics yeah. um so even just being able to offer these are the types of books we're into yeah. um uh, i think would be would be really good um as for how i think probably i'm just wondering if part of the reason why i was feeling tentative about asking the questions that i did is because i tend to be a tentative participant um and that i feel like i need a certain level of confidence before i can feel like i can play in somebody else's yard um and so what i need what i would need is uh i don't know some sense of being worthy i think now i'm i'm going into personal psychology 
uh, but I would I would feel like I I feel like I am I'm worthy to join in the game, that I'm I, I'm welcome, um, welcome and worthy, two separate things. Uh, and uh, back to you, Ben. So um, we've we already had this conversation, a part of this conversation around what happens within those clusters, and you know to use the metaphor, what we're creating is the survey course, and you know so each of the clusters in phase three when we bring in undergraduates, then they are basically exposed to here is the constellation of topics that we consider part of resilience building. And they range from practical skills to interpersonal skills to financial, you know, organizational skills. And um, I think we've talked about this before, but I think there's also a, um, what may happen next is that we play with it on the Miro board and then eventually it gets transferred to a Kumu board or a Kumu map. Because right. when we do that, I think, Rachel, you were already, you were kind of hinting at this. There are people who gravitate towards each of the clusters. You know, there are some people who only live in one of those clusters. There are some people that are generalists. You know, I'm a synthetic person, so I'm always trying to figure out the relationship between the clusters. But then there are lots of people who only want to be in one cluster and those and that would be delegation. I, it's almost like, um, you know, using the sociocratic model, you have a circle and then you have sub circles. So, you know, there's the connect the dots club, which is the survey course, and then people self select into the guilds that are the, the clusters. And then that's up to the guild to figure out. Right. And they may yeah. want to use a similar model, you know, go through the same process within that cluster. Um, but, you know, that's really handed over to the people who want to who would be leading that course, for example, you know, like who would be the team that would lead that follow up course. And then that's up to them. Um, you know, that I could imagine, for example, that the way you would want to approach all of the permaculture regenerative agriculture stuff is going to be radically different than how you're going to talk about Wetiko and modernity, you know, like, so we don't need to figure that out at this level. We can just hand that off um, at, you know, sort of delegating authority as we go. Um, and, you know, I, I think that question of worthiness, um, I think, um, it's sort of I, I, what April was saying is the way that we keep people from not feeling like they're worthy is, is this is just what's a favorite resource? Put a post-it note up on the damn board. You know, it's like there's no risk here. There's no there's no bar. You have to be this high before you can add a resource. It's like, is there a favorite resource? Like, I mean, I think the, the focus is the question what would you recommend to somebody who was trying to grow their resilience network? What, what's a resource, what resources have you already recommended to people? You know, what are the things that you keep coming back to put up a sticky note? Like that's, you know, I think that part of the way that we keep people from having that kind of um, confidence gap is this is just any, anybody could do this, right? You know, it's sort of, we want to hear from everyone. And um, so, so they're really, I don't, I don't know, I, I kind of feel like maybe you're projecting onto people something that, um, that I'm not really sure that people, that many people will do, but all, I, 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 I'm going to pull back and say, I really think April's, I, I lean into April's thing of keep it as playful as possible. It's just a post-it note. What do you like? What's your favorite video? You know, it's, that's the that's the spirit of this. There's, there's no high stakes in any of this. This is just, you know, what do we like and how do we organize it? And this is not academic, you know, this is, 
I, I, I guess maybe that's, we don't talk to the public about this is a syllabus for a survey course, yeah. you know, like this is just, you know, post-it notes of favorite resources and, you know, uh, yeah, we, we can keep that whole, you know, the metaphor of the, the graduate course and the undergraduate, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't need to be shown anywhere. Anyhow, I'm rambling over to you, April. Yeah, the, the, this is the, the, the top level, the first layer that people see. And then under that are all the other layers about how we how we use that and how we integrate that and how it connects to everything else. Um, yeah, and making it making it playful and continuing to ask for people's opinions. Now that's not the same as getting facts from people, but we can work our way into how do you figure out what the facts are. You seem to have an erroneous opinion, so how do we figure that one out? <laughs> um, and we don't need to ask for anyone's pedigree in this. People will tell us what they think their pedigree is, <laughs> but, but we don't have to ask anything about that at all. So worthiness, which would be determined by somebody else who has the power to be letting you in or keeping you out, the gatekeeper power, doesn't doesn't enter into it if we don't have a pedigree attached to to the work or whatever. And I do think we do need to be careful about our language and about our the ease with which we use some of our ways of understanding things, which coming from the world of academia can be off-putting and can stand as a barrier to everybody else. But we're pretty aware of that and pretty much don't trip over that very often. But that, yeah, that could be a barrier for people. Um, anyway, that's that's all that I have to say. And Roland, I'm really glad you're in my sandbox, um, worthy or not. <laughs> and who am I to say if you're worthy? Over to uh, over to you, Roland. I don't think I have anything to add. Back to Ben. Yeah, I feel um, I feel like we got a plan, you know, and uh, there's some details to work out, like how do we integrate it into the website um, and some of that languaging, uh, you know, like how do we make it really invitational? I was thinking also about the, you know, it's not just we we all have a local dialect yeah. and, you know, we all identify or every tribe has its own, you know, secret handshake. And so figuring out a way to make it clear that like all tribes are welcome. So um, yeah, that we're, we're, we're a polyglot group and we try to figure out how to, and I think that's, you know, the, this, all of this makes me think of the blind ones and the elephant, yeah. you know, this is all very much blind ones and the elephant. And we're all in, not, I think it elaborates on not only are we in different places in the landscape, every place in the landscape is important. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah. and there are going to be times when some people are going to be more attracted to one place in the landscape or another there are times when it's important to know how to get from one part of the landscape to another, but all of these parts are, are, you know, equally valid just at different times and in different circumstances and, you know, in different ways. So yeah, being, figuring out how to make this all very blind ones in the elephant, the more perspectives, the more, and I think that's also, you know, you were talking about uh, it's people's opinions. And I don't know that we even need to worry about, sort of correcting wrong opinions because I think there's something about um sort of that anti-fragile approach where you know where there are more people who are in agreement that some of these things are more important 
that that gets some more attention. And it doesn't mean that, you know, the sort of a minority opinion doesn't count, but it's just sort of like, you know, and, and this is where mo most people are putting their effort. This is where most of us think the energy should go. And there are some people who think, you know, for very good reasons why this is a good thing to do. And, but it's just, a, you know, it, it's a, a lonelier landscape over there, but that, you know, again, doesn't mean it's not important. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of feel like it's just a matter of tidying up the notes and then big, and I think we've got a proposal for the whole bit. Um, details to be worked out on some of the actual steps. Um, over to you, April. Over to me? Yeah. Um, I, I need to go now. Um, but this has been a great conversation. Thank you. Um, can't say how much I appreciate and value your guys' ability to bring out some real incisive and important things. So thank you for that. And I'm going to sign off, possibly to see you later. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Well, then, I think um, back to you. Well, um, what do we need to um, close the meeting? Um, well, I, as the note taker, um, I think I can, basically I'll go back through and I'll just, uh, revise. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I, I will go back through and the goals and the focus that will all stay the same. I'll just revise the phase one, phase two phase three based on what we just talked about. And I think, um, and then uh, whatever the, the next steps are, we can kind of pull them out from the notes. Yeah. That'd be great, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I think this is, if it, I feel like we just took a big leap forward. Fantastic. And, um, do, uh, uh, and then how, did, how do you want to upload the video? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll just, I can, I can upload it to, I'll have to wait for it to process on the computer and then I'll upload right. it to YouTube. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I'll actually do some cleaning up on the, on the Zoom account anyway. Oh, and should I, so when I upload it to YouTube, should I, I'll just make it private and then let you know the link is there and then you can do what you need to do or we don't have anyone who's asked for privacy. Um, I think that it can all go public. So just do it public. What I've what I've decided to do, and I was talking about it one or two or three meetings ago, I can't remember, but um is to um uh, as soon as the meeting is over, just upload it to YouTube as is. And then I can go in after the fact and add the little thumbnail image and do the the sections and all of that. But I think it's better just to post everything. And, mm -hmm. uh, and this is new, so I haven't done it yet. But then go and clearing out the Zoom. And you uh, know what? Uh, that makes total sense to me. And I think when I upload it, because you can put the little description in. And I yeah. think I'll just do the, uh, I'll put in the description what it is and um uncleaned or something like that you know like perfect uh, uh un un unedited right details to follow or something like that cool so if yeah. anyone is a keener and you know they've subscribed and they jump on it right away they'll know yeah okay um, thanks for that okay cool i guess we're good to go then okay see you soon bye